Good morning and welcome back to the channel. And during the first half of us getting into Spain, it almost didn't feel Spanish, it was so green and lush. But now, that's what you imagine Spain to be like. So, I'll get Monica, go on, have a look outside, Monica. Go on. Oh, should I peer out here? Okay, <laughs> oh, this is good. I can hear a load of Spanish builders chatting and shouting away at each other. Okay, so today the plan. We are in northern Spain and we need to get down to Seville, which is, it's, it's about seven hours, isn't it? It's about seven hours away or so. And from Seville, six hours, and it's six hours away from here, we'll get there. Once we get there, we'll stay in a hotel and that is one hour away from the port of Huelva where we catch the ferry to Tenerife. So incredibly, today is Friday morning. It's still Monday morning. Am I right? Or oh, Sunday morning? Yeah, Monday morning. It's Monday morning. We're actually getting to Tenerife. We I... leave on Saturday. That's it. We leave Saturday morning from the ferry and we've still got, so all of Friday, all of Saturday, all of Sunday and Monday. Yeah. Is that right? Friday, Saturday, Sunday, three days or so. Anyway, three days or so left of travel. Can't believe it's so much still, but it's really starting to feel very, very different now. The scenery, it's much drier, it's much rawer. It's, oh, it's feeling very Spanish now. Okay, we need to hit the road so we don't get there too late. We need a decent night's sleep before we get on the ferry. So we're gonna hit the road and it's directly down south from here. It will get warmer and warmer and warmer. And in Huelva, I think, it's the temperature about 28 degrees, the forecast, isn't it? Yeah, it it's is. properly hot down south. So, oh, oh. I think it's about 20, isn't it? It's about 20 degrees here. It's, I mean, stunning weather, as you'd expect in Spain. 20 degrees, it's still perfectly pleasant. We'll include a link to the description of these places because apparently Monica found out that there are quite a few bike tours from around here, aren't there? Oh, yeah, yeah. And we've seen a lot of bikers heading off down this beautiful road here, so I'll include a link for the places. Couldn't recommend this place enough. Let's hit the road. Trailer update. Honestly, I can't believe it. We've, we've had to do nothing. No general maintenance to it at all. All of the straps are on perfectly. We haven't even, do you know this time, we kept it super simple. No extra straps on this bit, just four straps, one to the suspension on each side and one to the foot mount on either side. We've done no tightening at all. The only thing is here now, the number plate. This is quite a homemade job by the look of things. I bought it almost like a homemade trailer for 150 off eBay. And just these brackets here, attaching the number plate, I can see they, they start bending after a while. You know, all of the winds just pounding through it and they're rusted. And this has started cracking here and it's almost cracked across the entirety of the metal. So my feeling is this will snap off eventually. It's only got a bit of solid metal left. I hope it will last the last is it 500 miles or so? Last 500 miles. Let's hope it lasts and then in Tenerife I'll figure out a solution. But this will snap eventually. But it's only very small. Apart from that, perfect. Let me just give you a reality check. This is the reality and stupidity of trying to pack everything we own into a Fiat and relocating. Can you see behind Monica's face there? That's it. Monica's actually, Monica's now got the last day of travel with this on her lap. These, this bag next to her feet, and I need to come around and show you this because it is, oh, it's madness, total madness. That is the back of the car. I mean, it's, yeah, some people have said, how the hell can you do that with a Fiat 500? The Fiat's coped unbelievably well, honestly. I can't believe how good it copes. It will power up the motorways, up hills, no problem at all. But whew, let me get a, a side shot of this. That is the view of Monica there in the passenger seat, completely laden to the limit. And the rear wheel, look at that compared to the front wheel. It looks like we've got some lowering springs on that.
We pulled over to stop some fuel and we had no idea. It snapped off. So, we'll have to find, hmm, we'll have to find some gaffer tape or something, stick that on. Actually, it's lucky we stopped, isn't it? Yeah, wow. But that'll be fine, that's an easy fix. We'll get some gaffer tape, got loads of cable ties and stuff. Okay, just figuring out the best way to use this gaffer tape and make it last the final few miles, final few, probably 400 <laughs> miles actually. Mm. Do you think that will hold? Borderline. Okay, I'll wrap it around a few times. Borderline, but this stuff is, this stuff is strong. Okay, it is very, very strong. So if I put it like that, and then just start wrapping it around, I think, I think it will hold. Okay, like that. Okay, that will hold 100%, yeah. won't it? Yeah. Well done. Really good. Good job. Okay, check out my handiwork. <laughs> good, yeah, and this one is. Yeah, that one's fine. But apart from that, it is. solid. Okay, let's hit the road, yeah? Yes, let's go. Let's go. Okay, we've stopped off for fuel because we've just hit the three hour point. So three hours left to get to Seville. It's hungry now, aren't we? Yeah. Every service station here is just its own little, like they don't seem to have the big chains, do they here? Like France does. So for example, right here, you've got the cafe and bar and we hope there's going to be food, but in France, you know everywhere exactly what you're gonna get. It's pretty much the same stuff everywhere, but here, we've got absolutely no idea what to expect. Don't you feel like Every little petrol station here is like borderline something from a Western film or something like that. Just so much open, like arid landscape. And then you get to a little petrol station and you can just imagine it's like 150 years ago, replaced with cars, put horses instead of cars. Just got that kind of vibe. When you get this far down south with very little rain, you start seeing a lot of vehicles that, for example, in the UK, have completely rusted away. But here, because, well, I guess it's not that cold and there's hardly any rain, just some brilliant looking vehicles. For example, that 4x4 over there, old Nissan, look at that vehicle. I can't see any rust in it either. I need to go over and have a look at that. So, so cool. Coffee done. Let me show you around a little Spanish service station because, because they're not chains. A lot of these are completely out there, these places. And this one, for example, they're not gonna win any friendliness awards. For example, you go to the bar and very, very few words, absolutely minimal. And if you need the key to the toilet, for example, they won't volunteer the fact that you need a key. They'll just look at you as you try and get into a locked toilet, but never mind. Okay. Okay, so th this is pretty classic. Let me just show you here. You've got an old abandoned building there that hasn't been used in ages. You've got just really dry and arid fields behind. And here, oh, I love this. Look at this. This is an old Nissan Patrol. You don't see those on the road anymore. They've all rusted away. It's brilliant. Pizzeria just here. 
I just it's hot it's properly warm now it really has picked up with every probably every 50 miles or so you get down south and just long empty roads going down either side with mountains everywhere and this here is the little service station so you've got the petrol station right here and then you've got this which looks like a kind of independently run cafe restaurant etc etc all very unique all very interesting Good morning. You join us the following morning. Apologies yesterday. Just ended up getting to Seville way later than we thought. Went to get food from the supermarket. And then the problem was, we still don't know 100% if we need to fill out a Spanish COVID form or not. Because it says if you travel to Spain by air or sea, you need to fill out this form. You must you must have the form on you. But we didn't travel to Spain by air or sea, so there's no form for that and it won't let us fill anything in. So we'll just get to the ferry, fingers crossed, and hope it works. But the second we're on the ferry, we can relax. It's just we're not 100% sure if we got our paperwork in order. So it's about seven o'clock now. We'll leave at eight o'clock. Very quick bite to eat. Monica kindly tidying, tidying, cooking away there. Let me just show you what we've got. Little kitchenette area here Monica cooking away in here just a standard bathroom this is probably the least interesting place that we stayed at out of the three it's not there's nothing wrong with it at all it's fine and a big mirror there this, there's nothing wrong with it. it's just the first two were so nice I think Monica would very happily recommend the first two, wouldn't we? Yeah, but, but probably I wouldn't recommend this place. But there's nothing wrong with it, and you do get a lovely view. And wow, now, lovely view, I say, showing a 1980s industrial estate. There is a nice sunset, though. Um, but yeah, we're going to head off in about half an hour or so, and well, well, we'll take you with us on the process, because... There are a few things that could go wrong today, aren't there, before we get on the ferry? Yeah. And here's that stunning view I was showing you. Okay, ignore all of that. Ignore everything. The colour of the sky just absolutely makes it. The sun actually sets right in front of us. This isn't even the sunrise, it's just morning sky. And I think, I think that's the sea right in the distance there. Is that possible? I think so. Where is the car? Can you see it? Yeah, oh, and the car, here we go. I just got it from the underground parking. And there it is. So we're gonna go and pack up and we're aiming to leave within five minutes. Then we should be on schedule.
Well, it made it one and a half thousand miles. Fiat parked up there at front of the line. Bonneville, everything perfect. Honestly, can't believe how seamless it was. And this is all of the cars lined up to get from Huelva over to not just Tenerife, but also all of the Canaries themselves. I think we've seen a few Belgium, Italian cars and stuff. Got some bikers there and the ferry right next to the sea or in the sea which is right next to us there probably about 200 meters away or so so this is specifically a ship for the canaries i think will be maybe one of the last stops so you have to stop off a lot of the different islands that's why it takes such a huge amount of time but you can see here Lots of, for example, camper vans from different countries in Europe. Lots of vans, I guess, taking people and maybe maybe some... I, I know that because it's so expensive to ship stuff to Tenerife, you get people who just drive in their vans back and forth to mainland Spain, picking stuff up, dropping it off in Tenerife, back and forth, back and forth. But you get a big, big range of different vehicles coming on here and excitement levels are very high because I think we should start boarding in about half an hour. made it and we always said once we get on the ferry then we can actually breathe a sigh of relief because the Fiat's made it we've made it on time to the ferry port and we had all of the paperwork that we need so we started noticing a really bad very loud sound. very very loud a grinding sound yeah. maybe the trailer but a really bad grinding sound then when they beckoned us over to drive around and drive onto the ferry you have to go down a steep metal grated ramp and then up a really steep one the sound was awful if that was happening 600 miles ago i would be freaking out beyond belief but at least now we're on the ferry to tenerife so <coughs> for example if it breaks down we're not going to be dumped back in mainland spain they're going to dump us off in tenerife so at least we've made it and then we can hitchhike the last <laughs> few miles or i can take the bonneville and monica can hitchhike
9.30 p.m. and you're allowed down at certain times to come and get a few belongings from your cars, for example, bedding and things like that. Just come down after dinner. Some really cool vehicles here. I'm gonna flip the camera and show you some of these. So this is, I think, tell me if I'm wrong, an old, is it an old, I was gonna say an old Willis Jeep. It's not though, actually, it's not. It's way bigger than that. US Army says there's someone name that Jeep. Let me see if I can get back of it. Name the Jeep. Wow. And look what's behind it. Ford Mustang. Beautiful Mustang behind that. Five litre V8. That is stunning. And then there, you've got all of the bikers. Africa Twin, Ducati, Ducati and a Harley there. Ah, and Monica has just found... Monica's just found a car. Here we go. Okay, so we're going to go over here. Get a few bits out from the car. But it's always great seeing old Sierra there as well. It's always great seeing the different cars and stuff that come over to Tenerife because you get a really eclectic mix over here. Ah, here we go. Okay. Right, we're going to open up and get the stuff out. Good morning. Good morning. This has been right here. Got as much as I can. Monica, my sleeping arrangements for the past 10 hours. And actually, it was surprisingly okay, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, it's been for eight hours. Eight hours at least. I've been here for eight to 10 hours. It's now about 9 a.m. We've got about 17 hours left. We're about to go for breakfast. And after breakfast, I will give you a proper tour of this ship to show you what it's like on here for 38 hours. This is sunrise on the bar area and we thought we'd show you this bit now because this gets really busy later on. You've got a bar area down there, swimming pool there and it's, it's just a really, really nice spot. Even though it's about 9am or so, it's already about 21 degrees, beautiful weather. And the interesting thing is when you come on this ferry you see so many different characters for example you get people who stay people who stay in the rooms i think it's about 350 pounds plus for a room so you get a lot of people of course staying in rooms we went to check the prices but they're all sold out so don't try and get a room on the day that you get on the ferry um, but you get so many different types for example when you go down for dinner you get everything from a decent amount of kind of I'd say hippies, isn't it? Yeah. Like, you know, dreadlocks and probably traveling this way because they don't want to, you know, add to the carbon footprint. I'm guessing, you know, that type of people. So you get that type of people, then you get people who go down in their Sunday best and you get a lot of Germans, Italians, really eclectic mix. I met a very nice German guy yesterday. I was just chatting to him in the queue to get dinner. And he said that he was tired of his life in Germany so he sold his house in Germany he sold all of his belongings he's got a car a trailer his two two sheep dogs and he's relocating everything to the island of La Palma which is one of the smaller Canarian islands so many characters okay I'll take you down to the restaurant area which is where every meal is prepared and eaten so, dining area there with, of course, sea views. Monica just said, sorry, Monica. Sea views both sides. Just beautiful spot if you can get a window seat. It's great. Actually, the queue's not too bad. It can get massive sometimes. This is the queue for the food. Monica usually grabs the table and she's kind enough to let me queue up for the food. I'll grab that one. I'll give you the, the camera. So we've each got croissant, frittata, orange juice, six pounds for everything. I think it's pretty good value actually here in general, the meals. We've got our little coffee spot now. The 
bar is just around that side. They serve nice coffees and things. And the balcony or the terrace is just behind us there. And this is game changing because I downloaded a couple of days ago Theme Hospital, which is a game from 1994. And it's one of those really, really annoying games that if you play at home, it ruins your life because you cannot stop playing it. It's just so addictive. But on the ferry, when you need to pass 40 hours and it's mind-numbingly boring, this is the best possible way to pass time because it's so addictive. Time literally flies. At the end of it, you don't want to get off the ferry. It's so fun. So we're actually having to limit ourselves. And I've got Monica into a similar game that she's playing on her phone. And Monica's busy building an island. So we both look like we're computer programmers <laughs> desperately typing away, but in reality, we're playing games for five-year-olds. Oh. I completely forgot to say, actually, we haven't done any updates about geographically where we are. Right now, with about 15 hours to go, we've just gone past the southernmost point of Morocco. So we're kind of a bit further away, but we're almost hugging the west coast of Africa. It's really exciting, actually, when you see, and when you travel by land and see, you realize how gigantic a distance it is. So it'll be five days to get there, huge. But I have to show you this. Who remembers this? There will be some people who have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about, and there'll be some people freaking out because they won't have seen this game for about 20 years, and it was their favorite game of all time. I promise you, if you get it back, you will be addicted to it. It's five pounds to get it on your laptop. Best money I ever spent, but it's so addictive. At the end of this ferry trip, I am deleting the game and deleting my password for using this because I'm, I'm not going to turn into the type of person who just plays this for 20 hours a day when I'm in Tenerife. So this will be deleted the second I'm off it, so I'm making the most of it now. at a map and we think we are within 30 miles of Lanzarote but the interesting thing is even though we're within 30 miles of the Canaries we're still about 11 hours from Tenerife and we were wonder we were amazed weren't we at how close we are to the Canaries and the reason it's still 11 hours to Tenerife even though we're only about 30 miles to Lanzarote is because this ferry will stop at every single Canarian Island and Tenerife we think is one of the absolute last ones and for every single stop that they do they have to not only get the very specific cars off and vehicles off that are going to that specific island they then have to load up all of the the cars going to other Canarian Islands and they can't just load everyone on they have to for example get the the La Palma cars and vehicles into one specific line, get the Tenerife ones into another, the Lanzarote, the Gran Canaria, all into specific lines, because you can't have people driving off, reversing back on, etc., etc. So it's actually really in depth, the, the sortation process, isn't it, to actually get people on and off. Um, so that's why it takes so long at every single island. So geographically, we're close, but we're still 11 hours away. Okay, prices. This is off the top of my head to give you a rough idea. And bear in mind, all of these prices are for the car and the trailer. So for the ferries, it is more expensive taking a car and a trailer, although not as much more as I thought. The cost, let's do the first ferry first. The cost of Dover to Calais, the ferry, was £160. The f and then the tolls to get from Calais in the north of France all the way down to the south of France, they were about, probably about 85 pounds. Mm -hmm. But interestingly, the tolls in Spain, they were probably no more than 25 pounds. So Spain is massively, massively cheaper than France toll-wise. Accommodation, the first night's accommodation was about 69 pounds. Mm -hmm second night accommodation about 65 pounds and the third night was 55 so all of the accommodation was great value and this ferry 
was, with the trailer of course, £460. And the cost of fuel, I was amazed that the Fiat didn't seem to use too much more fuel. I think if it's one and a half thousand miles, that would probably have cost us, with the inflated payage fuel costs, it would probably have cost us something around just under £200, maybe £180 for fuel. So the whole thing in total, you're probably looking at here guys, got this embarrassing top of my head, let me just work it out. Uh, you're looking at around about a thousand pounds, maybe 1,100, 1,200, something around the 1,000 to 1,200 mark for getting from England all the way down to Tenerife with a car and a trailer. It's a lot, isn't it? It's a lot, but you on the positive side you get everything you own this is us completely relocating down to Tenerife and the cost to get stuff shipped to Tenerife would have been gigantic and, also, we're and we're taking the bike and the cost of renting a bike on a daily basis even if it's a 125 cc in Tenerife something like 40 euros a day so that money will incredibly quickly balance itself back out so around about 1,000 1,200 pounds for the entire journey oh that's scary on a tiny little sailing boat like that We've just docked at our first island, which is Lanzarote. I'll take the camera. There it is. I'll take the camera off Monica and I'll do a little ship tour because it's probably about the quietest that it's going to be now because for the next, we think about 10 hours, it's going to be people on, people off, different cars. So here we go. I'll take you around. Okay. We've got Monica there in her new favorite spot. This is the lounge area which don't 100% get it we've been buying coffees and cakes from there but apparently there's no eating even though they serve coffees and cakes so I still don't understand that but never mind out there you can see in fact let me get a bit closer you can see everyone sitting outside there just looking out onto Lanzarote getting ready to get off and then If I go upstairs, we've got another lounge area with an elevated view. There you go, you can see quite an industrial classic port area of Lanzarote there. Everyone waiting to jump off. This is the lounge area and through here is the area that we actually slept. So this is the area for people who don't have a room booked and as you can see it's perfectly comfortable and only about five percent of the seats were used so there was more than enough space so that's that little children's play area they've actually got an area for pets as well so it is a pet friendly ship lots of dog owners on here coming along the corridor and then just another little seating dining area here and that's that's pretty much it actually it's not a gigantic ship with regards to free open space that's the canteen area just here just here's where you have pretty much every meal and they serve some okay stuff it's not bad desserts coffees things like that and coming round and now we're just doing a loop all the way back round that's where the cabins are right down at the end there and you just do a loop all the way back round and we're going to come to the only actual shop there is which sells a few perfumes and things like that but that is the only shop so all you have you've got a tiny little shop selling perfumes got a cafe selling coffees and cakes and you've got that restaurant there oh and that's where you go downstairs to get to the car. Lanzarote out there. Little perfume shop here. Just see through there. Tiny little perfume shop. Good value though. A lot of stuff in Tenerife. I think it's not a tax haven, but I think it's VAT free islands or something. So you do save money on luxury goods. And finally, we're back here at coffee shop bar and that's it 
that's a full complete tour of the pretty much the entirety of the ship apart from the cabins Well, it's three in the morning and we have made it to Tenerife. We are on Tenerife. I don't want to say too soon that we've made it full stop because we've still got 57 kilometers left, but it feels just unbelievably good to be in Tenerife. And it doesn't even matter that it's three o'clock and we're tired. All that tiredness has disappeared now. The excitement of being here is indescribable. Just picked up the keys. Very nice and easy. The lettings agent gave us the exact location of where to get the key from. The key lock worked perfectly. And we're just heading back the final nine minutes to our apartment. And we are right on the sea. The sky, strangely, it's not pitch black. It's actually relatively light, even though it's about 3.30 in the morning. So you can very clearly see everything. And just beautiful to hear, hear the ocean lapping away at the shore. Let's wrap it up here. Thank you so much for coming along with us on this adventure. The next one will be a flat tour when we're all unpacked. Please do give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you in the next one from our apartment in Tenerife.